a secret? Come closer. Did you know that manipulation of linguistics is actually a manipulation of its recipient? Just like I did right now with you. I'm Dave, I'm a health and wellness coach. I use linguistics with my clients in a hypnotherapy sense, in also a training sense, but in so many other ways, using it in ecology, making sure that it's a win-win. Did you guys also know that 93% of communication is miscommunication because it's not just the noises we make out of our face, it's the tone, the timbre, the tempo, the volume, whether it's an upward infliction or a downward infliction at the end of a sentence, whether it's how our posture is going, our breathing, our eye contact. All of these things come into just the visual auditory aspect of communication. So what if there's things that you could figure out inside of spoken and unspoken communication to understand what's actually underneath, what's trying to be conveyed through the language that's used. That's something that we're going to be doing here across all of my channels. Because I am trained in linguistics, I'm a hypnotherapist, I love talking in rhymes and circles with my clients to be able to confuse the critical faculty, get the conscious mind out of the way and allow things to go straight into the subconscious. I do that in ecology. However, mainstream media, politicians, and anyone else that might be perceived in an authority figure, they punch down into the subconscious of the masses. This is the start of a new series talking all about what's presupposed. And a presupposition is just exactly that. What is presupposed about the linguistics inside of this statement here? We're going to be going through and reading all of the headlines from around the world that are eye-catching to me that I can do a little bit of education around the linguistics inside of it. So let's start today with what happened over the weekend and the major headlines that came out with it. Just in, Donald Trump is rushed off stage by Secret Service during a campaign rally in Pennsylvania. Follow live updates. You can see here the presuppositions are capital letters just in, as in breaking news, pay attention. The following statement is not inflammatory, it's not accusatory, it's not inciting anything, it's delivering facts. That's one of the things that journalists have to do best is they have to be really careful with trying not to piss people off. They don't do it very well, especially these guys. However, this one here is exactly what they should have done. Breaking news, brief statement, follow us to be able to find out more information. In fact, they didn't call it an attempt until uh, I think four tweets later, four headlines later, they were collecting evidence, they were collecting facts so that they didn't piss off any more people. The fun fact, everyone's blaming CNN when you can go over and see the exact same thing on Fox. Breaking news, major security incident breaks out at Trump rally in PA. The thing that we need to pay attention here is it's the exact same format as the CNN post. They're doing what they should have done. Breaking news, all eyeballs on this thing here. Major security incidents breaks out at Trump rally in PA. The presupposed thing here is the breakout. It's Trump rally PA associated with security incident. These two are the same thing. That means that there's chaos that's gone on because breakout is the thing that is joining the two together. We can presuppose that everything inside of this that is uncertain. We don't know what's going on. So we're gathering facts to be able to put it to you guys, the viewers, in as least a form, as least a inflammatory way as possible. When it comes to breaking news like this, they don't have the facts. They don't know what the hell's going on. They've done the exact same thing as CNN. If, if anything, CNN did a better job because they said, follow for live updates. That might have seemed like a presupposition. However, it was explicitly said, follow us. Now to something different. The previous two were good examples of collecting facts and pinpointing eyes on this. Attention here, give me your attention. This here is absolute shit. Check out this dog shit headline and the subheading. The gunman and the would-be dictator. Violence stalks the president who has rejoiced in violence to others. Notice the title, the gunman and the would-be dictator. There's no adjectives describing the gunman. However, there's adjectives describing the ex-president, isn't there? The gunman, we've heard of the gunman before in something that happened in the 60s with another previous president. Not going there. Would-be dictator. That's the presupposition of dictator. He's a would-be dictator. And that's why we can't elect him again. That's the presuppositions that journalists just like this piece of shit are trying to get into your mind to say, oh my God, violence and rejoicing is synonymous with the president. That's what's trying to be conveyed right here. That is the presuppositions of the words that this dickhead has used. The gunman, this is just a lowly soul who was just a single gunman on his own. 
He's not radicalized. He's not mentally ill. He's not anything. He's just a gunman, just a gunman, like everyone else that has the ability to follow the Second Amendment over in the United States. Just a gunman, just an everyday walk of life. You know, the presuppositions just inside of the gunman and what's not said, what's been omitted, speaks volumes. However, the would-be dictator and violence stalking him, rejoicing in violence to others, it casts him in a really, really bad light. It's like it's saying that the only thing that Trump loves is violence. You could say that, or we could see the spin that's going on from the media because that there is inflammatory to say the least. The things that are being left unsaid here is he wants you to believe in his rhetoric that the ex-president and probably most likely future president is a violent man and loves violence because that's the rhetoric that they've used for the last eight years. Long story short, Linguistics is all about what is left said, what is unsaid, and somewhere in the middle is the truth. When it comes to that previous dude, we don't know if he's a contractor. We don't know what his role is inside of that because I couldn't be bothered doing the research, to be honest. That was just a great example of an inflammatory, overt style of linguistics that says, hey, believe this. Believe this thing that I'm trying to push across. And sadly, a lot of people are going to stomach that really easily instead of looking at somewhere in the middle ground what's being said. Linguistics is everywhere. The use of linguistics in journalism, in uh, books, in all forms of media, politicians, so on and so forth, it's used 24 seven every single day. You need to get well versed in understanding the things that are said, the things that are left out, the things that are omitted, the things that are deliberately trying to install a new belief, like that previous one, violence synonymous with president. The thing with journalism, the thing with any kind of reporting style like that is it's meant to be unbiased you're not meant to have your feelings inside of it you're not meant to project your worldview worldview your politics your anything it's here's the facts this is what i've reported this is the way that it needs to go that's why people don't care about mainstream media anymore mainstream media has been corrupted it has been put with people's agendas you know uh, interest groups influencing money like lobbying all the rest of the things it's corrupt it's a corrupt institution these days and it's not one side or the other, it's both. And all these in investigative reporters that are individual reporters, that are in independents, they're exactly the same thing. They have their own biases. The only place that you can get some form of unbiased media is a few people on Substack. Um, that being said, I barely pay attention to anything anymore because it's all crap. Majority of it's crap. It's people projecting their shit onto the world through their unbiased reporting style. It frustrates the hell out of me. That's why I don't pay attention to any kind of media anymore because it just gets people rolled up. Media is, it's a way to divide, control, elicit fear responses out of people so that they're more suggestible, so that they're more programmable. Perfect example, example, perfect example, look what happened four years ago. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Much love, take care, follow me to rise higher.